The first finals matchup ever between the Boston Celtics and Dallas Mavericks, featuring Kyrie Irving's long-awaited return to Boston, and Chris Stapps Porzingis also playing his former team, is a wild matchup for more than just those reasons. Whether it's the showdown between four of basketball's top dogs, or the fact that the discourse regarding how this series will play out is broken, you're about to see a full preview of the NBA Finals. That said, just 13.1% of you watching at this very moment are subscribed, so if you enjoy my content and haven't already, stay up to date by subscribing. Make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram at dflowhoops so you're fully up to date with the most relevant NBA news. Can't thank you enough for any bit of support, let's get right back into it. So, oddly enough, the Brooklyn Nets are responsible for building both conference champions this year. In 2013, the Nets traded three future first round picks to Boston, one of which turned out to be Jalen Brown. And last year in 2023, the Nets of course dealt Kyrie Irving to the Mavericks. For this series, you can thank both the Nets and Wizards. Washington traded Porzingis to Boston last summer and Gafford to Dallas at the trade deadline. The finals this year is not as simple as the top-heavy Mavericks going up against the stacked-with-depth Celtics, as much as I've heard some try to describe it as that. The Celtics and Mavericks last met up back in March, a few weeks after Dallas bolstered their front court by trading for P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford. In this game, behind three 24-plus point performances from Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis, Boston dominated by 28, but for the Mavs in that game, Gafford played under 6 minutes, while Jones Jr. played just over 7, two players who've developed into primary rotation pieces since then. One of the factors making Boston lethal is that their supporting cast is filled with all-star caliber talent. White, Porzingis, and Holiday can all step up for 15 to 30 points on any given night, even while load managing throughout the season. Chris Stapps was able to block 5 plus shots in 6 games this past season. The fact that Boston cruised through the East with Horford as their primary starter, who replaced Porzingis exceptionally, shows you the potential of Boston at full strength. However, the Celtics haven't seen anything like the Mavericks up to this point. Dallas is the first team since the 2010 Lakers to beat three 50-win teams on their path to the finals. With that said, while Anthony Edwards is no slouch, neither Kyrie or Luka have faced the type of defenders that Boston has. Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown are two of the best backcourt defenders in the association, so their defense on Luka Doncic will be interesting to watch. The Celtics coaching staff will likely mix up all of Holiday, Brown, and even the bigger Tatum on Luka to consistently give him different looks. But what goes overlooked about Luka and Kyrie is their on-ball defense. Just like Tatum and Brown are underrated defenders, Doncic and Irving are similar. Jason and Jalen are great defenders because of their ground coverage, while Luka and Kyrie are great defenders because of their pesky on-ball pressure. Doncic and Irving improving as defenders is something you don't hear talked about often, but watch out for it when the finals kick off. The Mavericks' depth of talent I've been seeing get overlooked by a lot of people, but don't sleep on the fact that PJ Washington stood on business to drop 20 plus points in three straight conference semifinals matchups from games 2 to 4 against OKC. Additionally, Derek Jones Jr. scored 17 plus points in three straight games to close out that series. Gafford and Lively the second, given Luka and Kyrie thunderous lob threats, has made the Mavericks' pick and roll game a sight to behold. On the other side, defensively, the monster rim-protecting presences Daniel and Derek are interchanged to occupy the floor at all times, and it's a dominant one-two punch of low men that coach Jason Kidd has made the best of. The switchability level for both teams will play a massive part in deciding 2024's champion. We saw how Doncic exposed Gobert and generally how the Timberwolves game planning tried every single coverage in an attempt to adjust to Dallas's pick and roll game. After being ranked just the 6th best player in 2024's postseason, Jalen Brown feels he's being undermined by the media. Jason Tatum also feels he deserves more respect, and rightfully so given I'd agree with the fact that Tatum's been the most underappreciated performer in this year's playoffs and for the last few years in general. However, on the other hand, Luka Doncic is a killer, folks, with no regard for human life who will do everything humanly possible to deny Tatum and Brown of the respect they're trying to earn. Doncic, Irving, and company aren't going to let this Boston team get over the hump so easy. We saw Jalen Brown snap Luka's ankles a while back, so Luka may be looking to make up for that. Either way, 
The battle between Jalen and Luka is key. Since Brown is one of the highest IQ players defensively, I can't wait to see how Doncic responds to having a mix of Jalen and a generational defender in Holiday on him. Luka is a lot smarter than a ton of NBA players, but he's got a smaller gap than most ahead of Jalen Brown in terms of IQ, in my opinion. Jalen is extremely intelligent both on and off the court. Nevertheless, Doncic leads the playoffs across the board in about every statistical category. I've been hearing people say Kyrie Irving is better than Jason Tatum entering this series. The disrespect for Tatum as a whole has been pretty insane, but aside from that take, generally I think Irving deserves most of the praise he's been getting. What Jason does defensively isn't really taken into account with him. He can genuinely shut down your point guard on the perimeter with his lateral quickness, then switch onto your center and hold him in check down low, so we have to start paying attention to Tatum's defensive value more. Here's how the discourse is revealed as totally broken though. The Celtics are a minus six and a half point betting favorite, a fairly massive spread for an NBA Finals. But the funny part is, even with 89% of bets being placed on the Mavs to win, Boston's odds aren't showing any signs of going down from that six and a half point spread. Then again, you can't forget some of the biggest analysts in this country are picking Dallas like Tim Legler, Nick Wright, Shaq, Richard Jefferson, Chris Broussard, Rick Buecher, and LaShawn McCoy. So a lot of the mainstream is leaning in the Mavs direction, but that doesn't give us the clearest idea of who the genuine down-to-the-core sleeper team in this series is either. Given ESPN's BPI has given Boston just under a 66% chance to win Game 1, while NBA experts at CBS are split 50-50 with their picks for the series as a whole. We should be in for an all-time great matchup. For the Celtics, it's all hands on deck for championship number 18. For the Mavericks, they're looking for their franchise's second. The Celtics only hang championship banners, as Jason Tatum said, and their fan base is desperate to finally surpass the Lakers in NBA titles. For the Mavericks, Doncic's first trip to the finals and Irving's return to them after last making the finals in 2017 puts the spotlight to a whole different level of bright on the Celtics to finish their business. This may come down to coaching in the end, as Jason Kidd's masterful game planning on both ends has been far too low-key of a driving factor to Dallas's success this year. Joe Mazzulla is going to be severely tested. Mazzulla's made the most out of Boston's talent put in place by Brad Stevens thus far. In your opinion, I want to know what the X factor is for both teams in order to win a title. Best answer gets next video's commenter shoutout. Today's commenter shoutout goes to Henry Koya who says Mavs in 7 or Celtics in 7.